Hi, all. Greetings, fearless leader. <laughs> uh, sorry, I'm a little late. Um, OK. Uh, Veer is here. Yes, Veer is here. Veer, why don't you give us a rundown of the viewer pipeline as it exists right now? Uh, sure. So uh, we've had a new uh, deployed viewer as of last week. That's the latest maintenance uh, release. Um, since then, uh, we've been continuing with the usual round of updates. The the next maintenance release, uh, uh, Yorsh, I think doesn't have a ton of new stuff going into it. Um, probably will be released in a not too distant future. Um, other things that are also slated for the not too distant future are the uh, profiles viewer. Um, we also have the Love Me Render uh, viewer, which has some, uh, as you might guess, rendering fixes in it that uh, should be going out uh, relatively soon. Of course, the, the problem is that if each, um, you know, we don't release more often than once every two weeks, so it's going to take a while to get these out, even if pick any particular one and say that it's good to go. So, but uh, those are the those are the biggest to be keeping an eye out for. We have a, a new camera presets viewer out. That's uh, that's an RC that basically just has localized changes related to managing your camera position and remembering presets for camera position. Um, so I think there's some cool stuff there. Its crash rate is a little high, so we're not uh, sure right now what's going on with that. Got to dig in. Um, let's see. I think everything else is uh, uh, kind of farther down the pipeline uh, at this point. So those are those are the big things. Oh, cutting out. Sorry. Cool. Thank you. Um, I, apologies, I may have network connectivity trouble. There's an ice storm going on outside my house, um, and I've had intermittent problems with my network disappearing. Um, so uh, there is another thing that we wanted to talk about a little bit today. The the um, as you know, there is a uh, a set of changes coming soon to introduce a new level of premium. Uh, and uh, that has some architectural implications. It has some implications for viewers. So shortly, the development branch for that set of viewer changes will be appearing, uh, if it hasn't already, in the viewer repository. It's, uh, it's there now. It's there now, yeah. So um, the, the those changes mostly are are essentially cosmetic. Um, there are a bunch of places in the viewer where we display what things are going to cost if you do them, and some of those things are some of those costs are going to change in the when when we make the changes to premium, and um, and and some of them will be sensitive to whether or not you are, uh, you know, which flavor of premium you are, which, whether you're basic or not. Uh, so what's just to, to put a very short version on the changes, there will be an additional hunk of LSD that gets returned by the, by login as part of the login response that will have um, a bunch of, uh, benefits, tags, and values associated with them. And in this case, there there are some costs in there. So uh, you should start seeing that being returned by login hopefully sometime next week. Um, it's, it's another entry in a map you're already getting. It's not a change to the messages. It's just a change to uh, uh, it's it's an, a, another thing you won't know what to do with, and as long as you haven't added any code to get upset about that, it's uh, it won't be a big deal. Um, but the the development branch for that 
for that viewer will will show you how those values should be applied and where they should be used. So um, when we do the premium restructuring, those values will be also governing various behaviors on the simulator, including what things cost. So um, anybody not using a viewer that's been updated with those changes may be getting bad information about what things are going to cost and if the cost on the simulator side is higher than what it is on the than what the viewer is telling people to pay, um, some transactions are likely to fail. So um, that we're going to try to keep that a, a nice, clean, separate set of changes so that you can quickly adopt them, um, but uh, and and have versions that will that will be presenting all the right information. Um, but you should be watching for that and thinking about it. I mean, I think we we should have those login servers up on a DD very soon. So I will I will post a note to announce list to let people know when that happens. <laughs> uh, other than other than beginning to send out that blob of LOSD, we're not going to provide any hints about about what Premium Plus gets or doesn't get. Uh, From the viewer standpoint. You were going to say, Veer? Oh, sorry. Uh, yeah, from the viewer standpoint, this is a pretty small set of changes. Basically, it, it used to be that we had uh, kind of hard-coded logic in the viewer a few places where it'd say, you know, if, if agent is premium, then do one thing, else do another thing. And now it's all just, the behavior is all just coming from this LSD blob. So we, we uh, you know, populate a data structure with information about various fields at the time we of login and then uh, just use that information anytime we need to, you know, fill in the right. Uh, when we start sending that blob of data, it will have the current costs in it. At some point when we actually, so before, before we introduce the new level of premium and the changes, we are deploying the software that spreads that information around, but the information they'll be passing around initially is the current costs, and it won't. So uh, while you while you will be able to see what dimensions we are um, possibly fooling with, you won't be able to see which what what exactly we're doing with them. And. Uh, that's that's uh, the best we can do at the moment. So uh, so that's that's what that is. Um, there there may be some there may be some other. Other things that will will uh, fold into that set of changes that are also good to have you adopt quickly, but we'll see. At the moment, it's just that that set of changes. So um, that'll be happening over the next. You know, we'll begin sending that data uh, in, uh, certainly sometime in the next couple of weeks, but it shouldn't affect any existing viewers. Mostly a heads up to know that you're going to want to do an update when we launch the premium changes.
Uh, Veer, do you want to address the question of what happens if you don't get the benefits? Uh, if the data is not sent, then uh, you shouldn't actually be able to log in. It's this is a new, basically, it's a new component of the login service. So if it's if it's you know not working, then it's just as if service is failing. So there shouldn't be a case. Once it's all deployed, there shouldn't be a case where you log in but you find yourself without that information. I think the way our the, the viewer will handle it right now is it will uh, display a message telling you that you're probably in a bad state, but that isn't a case you should in practice once this is all rolled out to Agni. Right. If the if the benefits is, uh, information is not available to log in, then it won't let you log in. It, it'll tell you sorry. It'll give you'll end up with the sorry something went wrong at our end. Uh, log on, log in failure. Uh, okay, so that's the that's the biggest news we had. Um, so, uh, the floor is open for that and anything else. Uh, that repo is an experiment I was not aware of, so I no comment. And I guess thank you for pointing it out to me. Uh, we have a we have a long list of repos to get migrate, uh, but we're we're working through them. Um, last names are coming along. I know you're feeling on the migrating repos. Oh my God, there's so many. Yeah, there, oh, there are a lot. 
I've actually just been testing a script that scans Bitbucket and follows all the links and lists everything it finds. It's it's producing a pretty impressive list. Oh, you've put a, yeah, okay, cool. That's good to hear. Alchemy is nearly ready to actually make some kind of beta release again for the first time in two years. Oh my God, kill me. I just love, I, I, I implemented a crash reporter finally, and then I suddenly was like, oh, I'm ready for a beta, and then I get so many crashes. Um, I already have a branch where I've integrated EEP with all of my rendering changes. No other topics today? In, in case anybody missed it in chat, EEP, it really is coming. Um, uh, I think that would, I think that would be fair, Tonya. Weeks, not months. 
That's what I said in the uh, chat. Yeah. And I, I think it's really true. Where if we're the, the, the outstanding blocker issue list has gotten quite short. Not quite empty yet, but making a lot of progress. Uh, in in keeping with our policy that we're not supporting it, I've removed Windows 7 from our stats. So, no, I don't have a, a number. Yeah, something like that, Beck. We are going to try to do a, a little more comprehensive update to our system requirements soon. The, the advice there is woefully... I'm not exactly out of date, but too well aged, shall we say. There we go. Long in the tooth, indeed. Uh, I, Tonya, I don't think I don't think we have we haven't gotten far enough in the process of deciding what we want to say about system requirements to to be able to answer that. We are planning to update system requirements, though it's it's on the list of uh, hopefully get it get to it soon project. One thing that came up there in the uh, context of EEP is that we are removing support for PCs that can't run uh, that can't run without basic shaders. That's that's not requiring ALM. That's just requiring you to be able to, you know, do do GL in its current form. In some respect. Yes, Tony, the switch goes away. We could have left the switch there and just have it not do anything, but that wouldn't be any fun. Oh, I have no that. Was it? Yeah, we still have lots of other settings that you can try to guess what, if anything, they do.
That's just a question of how much time we have for code cleanup, though. Nobody should assume that the fixed function OpenGL code is going to be staying in the viewer. Uh, the the cache the the cache replacement code is making progress again. Uh, I, I don't have a an expected visible date, but it, it's coming. We are putting putting time in on it right now. When we do that, we're also going to allow larger caches. If you want to consume your entire hard disk, go for it. Uh, I hate to break it to you, Tonya, but four terabytes wouldn't do it. I, I don't think there's any way to guess at what that number would be, but um, I know the asset store is a lot bigger than that. That's one reason our asset store is so big is that it's hard to figure out which assets are actually still used. <laughs> Well, if we haven't got any other issues,
I could uh, I could certainly use the extra time to get things done before the weekend. So appreciate everybody coming, uh, and we will see you in two weeks. I could take some guesses at how big the asset store is based on uh, working with other grid operators and writing an asset system or two, and it makes me cry with how much data can appear in a single day from people uploading so many textures. Copies and copies of the same texture, but slightly different. Oh, you know what I'm talking about. The horrible China grid. Yes, it just, just petabytes of data can appear just out of nowhere. Out of nowhere. Over a week. Among other things, yes, literally everything stored in the asset store. Everything. There's so much. notes, but they do.